Outlook Business. I'm Shalakshi Chakravarti and joining me right now in this very, very insightful conversation and an interview is Mr. Montek Singh Aluwalia, who is the former Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission of India and an economist himself. And sir, who else but you to help us understand and decode where India is heading as a nation and the state of the economy. Thank you very much for giving us your time and in this interview. Well, thank you for asking me. Now, I don't think we are destined to be stuck in the middle of income trap. I mean, whether we get stuck or not depends on what we do. And I think what the middle income trap holds is that when you reach a certain level of development, you've got to introduce a whole new range of reforms. So we should do them. Well, it's not just me. I mean, I have said that it will be a fiscal disaster. And I'm very happy to say that the Reserve Bank of India, in its report on the states, has also said the same thing. You know, the truth is that all over the world, uh, what you call unfunded pay-as-you-go systems become a huge burden, especially as the population ages and the working population shrinks. So essentially, uh, you're paying through taxes and a smaller and smaller percentage of the population is bearing the burden of a larger and larger percentage. That's why people shifted to a fully funded pension system in which you contribute and the government contributes. And that's the right thing to do. Now to reverse that will basically incur huge costs looking ahead, not immediately, but say in another 10 years. And the states are already in a very difficult position. They're not able to pay salaries and other things on time. So it, it, it'll either lead to that kind of problem or it'll lead to a collapse in, you know, productive expenditure, capital expenditure, expenditure on health, expenditure on education, which actually needs to increase. Well, I, I wouldn't call it unrest. I think there is uh, there is a lot of uh, expectations. I think there's a perception that outcomes do not match expectations. It's good for governments to be put under this kind of pressure. And it's not just in India, it's all over the world. Uh, so I think what we're going to see is rising expectations and governments having to respond. Uh, I think governments can respond uh, to take care of some of these problems, even if they don't fully meet them. Uh, but it just means uh, recognizing that some things are difficult, persuading people why it's important to take these difficult decisions, and also persuading them that the results are going to come only over a period of time. There, there's no instant solution to many of these problems. But you know, if people perceive that there is progress and we're moving forward and things are getting done, I think some of the unrest will go down. I think that's an important point. I mean, the global environment in the current year will be less supportive than it was last year. Uh, and in this matter, it's not that this is a certainty, but there's a lot of uncertainty. So we should actually uh, hope for the best, um, prepare for the worst. The worst is really the most important thing is to avoid getting into a crisis situation. And I mean, we've, our neighbors, I mean, Pakistan is in a crisis, Sri Lanka is in a crisis. These crises get precipitated when the fiscal situation looks out of control. So the first thing we should be doing is make sure that when people look at our fiscal position, they feel that we are on the mend. I mean, it's not important to get it all done in one year. But people have to feel that some difficult decisions that are needed are being taken so that two, three years down the road, things will look a lot better. For the rest, you hope for the best. Uh, let me say that I think climate change for us is extremely important. I mean, we know that the climate is changing and if the world doesn't put itself into the right framework, things are going to get worse. What we have to do is to do our part of that correction 
and I think we've set certain targets which are actually quite difficult. I mean, going to net zero by 2070. I feel that we need to create specificity around this target. 2070 is a very long way away. What are we going to do in the next 10 years? And I've been arguing uh, in papers and all that I've been writing that we should identify with granular detail what is it that we need to do in the major sectors to make sure that we get to where we want to get by 2070. That's a lot of precision is needed and the other thing is that it's not just the central government. A lot of, a lot of this has to be done by state governments, a lot of it has to be done by city governments. So I think we need the public to be aware that this has got to be done so that you don't just get mindless opposition because everything involves some cost. And I think people should be persuaded that they need to do this.